Hi guys, good evening, good evening. Hello, hello, how are you guys? Screen pull me here. Hi guys, good evening, welcome, welcome. I have my panel here, Nangoma Youths. Let's chat guys, tell me where you're watching me from. Welcome, welcome. Hello, ma'am. We are around. We are glad and to be part of the panel this evening. We are so much glad and we put so much in the case so that we can share with everyone around the globe. Yes, yes. Welcome, guys. Join in, join in, join in. Collins, you have a comment? Any comment to our viewers while we wait to, uh, for people to join us? I'm so glad indeed to be part of this panel so that we can uh, disseminate our knowledge to the whole world so that they know what we're doing and uh, what we have to discuss today. Thank you yes, very much. Yes, thank you guys. Chris, you have a comment? Yeah, I just want to take this opportunity and uh, welcome everyone who is um, on board so that we share the little knowledge that we have uh, on the topic that we'll be sharing so that together uh, we can build a better Zambia for everyone because it is the duty of each and every Zambian to, to contribute to the growth and betterment of this country. Yeah, it is not up to the people in government or the people holding the highest position to make Zambia a better place. But it is, it is the role of each and every Zambia. Yeah, so I'm glad to be part of this movement and I hope you will also enjoy this discussion. Thank you guys, thank you. Join in, share with your friends and family, ask them to join, share in your groups. You know, uh, we were just talking before we came in live to say, uh, they say uh, youth are the future leaders. Actually, youth are the leaders. Zambia's population, 50% of the, the population, they are youth. So you youth are the leaders of today. So take up the challenge, take up the mantle and fight for a better Zambia so we can all have a good life. So today we have a few topics to discuss and the first topic I wanted to discuss is uh, why the PF criminals have not been arrested. We are going over two months now since we ushered in a new government under our president, uh, Honorable Mr. President Hakainde Ichilema. We are going on two months now and we have seen um, Criminals have not been arrested. And today we saw that uh, Faith Musonda, who was found with millions of Zambian kwacha, has walked to freedom. So as you know, if you don't know me, my name is uh, Pumulo Stumbeko. I am a human rights activist, as well as a political advocate. And my passion is uh, to have human rights recognized and respected in Zambia because a lot of problems that we are having in Zambia is because of the lack of the respect of the human rights. So for me, as a human rights advocate, I want to lobby that human rights can be a subject in our classrooms. You know, from nursery school, everyone should learn about human rights. You know, human rights is very important. That's where once you are aware of the human rights, you begin to respect that we are all born equal before the law. And these rights are God given. Every human has them, you know. So we are here, we are training youths to be advocates, to go in our schools and communities and educate people about their human rights. But fast forward today, I just want to talk about equality before the law as a human right. And also I want to talk about workers' rights. 
uh, workers' rights is really being violated in Zambia as a human right. And also, I want to talk about free health care for all. So today we are going to focus on uh, these three main uh, human rights. And uh, the main human rights that we are talking about is uh, equality before the law and uh, workers' rights and also free health care and uh, shelter and food for all, for our mothers, especially for our children. So welcome, guys. Just share in your groups. If you are on the panel, share in your groups. Invite your friends and family to watch. Please, it's very important. I know that uh, our Zambian youth, they are highly engaged on social media platforms, but uh, platforms that such as this one are really important as well because it is such platforms which you can uh, better your life as a, as a citizen and help other people to better their lives and fight for, you know, governance, you know, democratic governance of our society, of our leaders. We have to talk about these things. You know, so many things have been going wrong for a long time and we don't, we just don't talk about them. So it's about time. The youth, you are the major, major population in Zambia, the youth. Uh, it's about time the youth, I am challenging all the youth to step up and start talking about governance of their country. Because if the youth leave the governance of their country to some of these political leaders, we see it will end up going nowhere. We saw like today, Mr. Nevas Mumba decided to join UPND. And I posted on my page to say why. The election is over. I think Mr. Nevas Mumba should have joined UPND before the elections. So we are seeing, and then I saw a comment that uh, he has some issues or some scandals. So we are just seeing that these politicians are just regrouping to protect themselves, either for fear of being prosecuted or for getting favors from the current government. They are there, you know. They keep moving from one political party to another. But we need to develop a new breed of leaders among the youth who are just patriotic who will be in politics to improve lives of Zambians, you know, to improve lives of Zambians such as, you know, have the human rights respected, you know, fight for fair wages for everyone. You know, we, we, are, we are talking like, you know, there's a lot of things going wrong in the new dawn and we are not seeing the change. We are not seeing the change. Like, for example, for workers' rights, Ministry of Labor, do we need a budget to act on these employers who are underpaying their, their employees? Do we need a budget? No, we don't. Uh, Joseph, you can come in. Okay, thank you very much, madam. Are you getting me? Yes, loud and clear. Welcome, welcome. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think the issue of human rights is one thing that we have to take it serious, very much serious. Because of our country, we are failing to respect the issue of human rights. That's why even these politicians, they're taking advantage of us, of our leaders, they're taking advantage of Look at the issue of the, the same faith. It is now like they are playing with our minds. They are not supposed to be, to be act like that. I think this issue, we're not supposed to be end like this. Let's look the way we can pressurize the government so that the faith can can explain more about the, that man. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Welcome, guys. If you're just joining in, welcome, Agrippa. I see you have posted the link. Vincent, good evening, Agrippa. I posted the link. Aaron, thanks, USA. <laughs> Crispin, yes, guys, share in your groups. Youth, you must be involved in these governance matters. Zambia will not change. Yeah? You can follow, you know, go see Seka 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 Seka. You know, you'll be laughing. Meanwhile, time is going. Other people, they are making their countries better. Hmm? They are involved in politics. You have to be involved in governance matters. For me, I'm appealing to all youth. If you are a youth listening, share to your friend. 
let us be involved in governance matters. That's how our country is going to change. Musa, you can come in. Thank you so much for the privilege. Thank you so much to all the panel, including you, ma'am. Thank you so much for allowing me to speak. My name is Musaope Piri. I'm a human rights advocate. And uh, you, madam, and whatever that I say here, I mean is for all the citizens of Zambia. Let me now first talk about the first part of respecting human rights, because I can't see that in working places in these campaigns that we have in Zambia. Our rights are being abused by paying as well as by the labor issue. Because you find that people are working very hard but paid less because the owners of those companies are not Zambians. And there is no one who goes there to go and visit them and see how what, or monitor how our brothers are working. We don't have those intelligent people, people of intelligence to go and check. If they don't have people who can go and they, they let them employ us in this foundation, we can be going and check and report everyone that is abusing human rights to the labor office. This morning, this today I was hearing the news. In Kambala, that's Crown TV. In Nakambala, people, Nakambala Sugar Company. People are talking, are saying they are being, they are working very hard without proper, in, 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 a, not, in, in not a good proper environment. They are not getting paid. Some they are sucked with, for no reason. Like this man was explaining live on TV, saying that me, I've been fired from, the jo from this job as a driver for no reason simply because the girl the manager wanted i gave her i gave her the lift so he thought that it's, it's the reason why that girl is denying is, is refusing him so yes these ones that are, are just useless you make somebody's life miserable and in town we have to work for us to find food and if you move someone from a job it's like killing someone on the neck so I think if there is a labor office company that are listening to me, labor office in Zambia, if you are listening to me, please, you can follow up with the ward councillor in Nakambala. He was there. Ward councillor was there this morning to go and check, go and follow him and see how people are working in Nakambala. We don't want that to repeat again. And there are small, small companies making blocks in Lusaka around places, different places. They are, they, they are making people to work very hard, getting to pay. No one goes there to go and investigate how they are working or check on them. People are roading cement from the container to the truck. One person roading 100 bags without protective materials and getting paid 30 kwacha. They say, no, is this how we're going to work? Because health comes first. And human rights always support health. That's what we are. We are not here to challenge anyone to say they are not doing their job. No, we are here to giving each other a proper updates of what is happening in the society. Us as human rights, we don't condone such allowing people from other countries to come and abuse our people here. We won't allow that. There are some Zambians as well who give employment to, to, to a certain lady as a maid, and you are giving them a very huge tax to work, sometimes even sexual harassed, simply because Zambia is dying slowly in the name that is the poorest country. We are not poor. What is poor is us, ourselves, not being active and know our rights. That's why when mom, you said that human rights should be a subject, let it be because it will give us a proper light to see who we are, what value we carry in our country. If there is anybody listening to me, let's make sure that we've got a department that goes in these small, small companies, shops, check how people are working.
see if they respect their workers, if they, we are equal rights, if we, all of us, we are enjoying this peace, this freedom we have in a new dawn. Let's go and check. For this part, I'll end here. Let me just have a glass of water. Then I'll come back on the healthcare issue. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, guys. So if you're just joining us, I see you, William, uh, share in your groups. Crispin, I posted the link there. Share with your friends and family. We are here to talk about what is affecting us in Zambia. And specifically today, we are talking about workers' rights. There is a lot of violation of workers' rights in Zambia. And the, the UPND manifesto was that uh, they would uh, promote local industries or promote Zambians' youth to own uh, licenses in businesses. And also that is connected to the respect of workers' rights. So we have seen that a lot of industries in Zambia, they are owned by foreigners. And what that means is that when these foreigners make money, they take it to their, their countries. And then uh, they employ Zambian citizens and play, pay them slave wages. They are highly underpaid, like equivalent to working for free. Some of these wages which are, our people are being paid is like uh, if they pay them 30 kwacha a day, that 30 kwacha is just for transport to get to work and to from and work, to, to work and back. And then they are out of money. So they are actually working for free. They don't give them transport allowance. So what we are saying is we need to respect our Zambian workers and we need the Department of Labor and workers' compensation, those people, they need to reinforce, they need to check all these businesses and make sure that they are paying people, you know, living wages. These are slave wages, which are people are being paid slave wages. And then what these companies are doing, whatever profits they are making, they are sending them out of the country. That's why we are left hanging dry. Zambia is broke right now because we have a lot of investors and all these investors, whatever profits they make, they take them to their country. They don't reinvent them, you know? They're very poor working conditions for our people, no safety equipment, you know? Some, I, I had a relative, a distant relative who died in Mongo. He was working on uh, installing the satellite towers, the towers for the cell phone, and he fell from that pole to his death because he didn't have any safety equip equipment to hold him in case he missed a, a step. You know, I don't know how tall the poor was. This is what we are saying. Our Ministry of Labor, you know, safety department, do you need a budget to, to reinforce this, to protect our people? You do not. So this is what we are saying, guys, uh, on the workers' rights and the violation, it is too much. You know, things have to change. We are in a new dawn. We need to see changes in these things, you know? And uh, next is uh, we want to talk about, you know, healthcare and also we are here to advocate for the government to help uh, our Honorable Minister, our Masebo, maybe visit the hospitals especially cancer hospitals is too expensive in the cancer hospitals. People, they are paying lots of money. You know, people are dying because they can't afford to pay their medical bills. So we are asking for the new Dawn government if they can step in and help people. Some of these people in the cancer hospitals, they can survive if they get the, the right treatment at the right time, early detection. And then if also the government can intervene and they pay the bills for some of the people who can't afford it. So we need to see some action. We need to see some positive changes in the new Dawn government. Otherwise, I'm telling you, we are feeling like myself. I feel really discouraged because I've not seen major, even simple things that do not require a budget. I've not been, there are no changes, you know? So we are just asking like simple things like going to the hospital, and you know, asking people how they are managing paying their bills, especially in the cancer hospitals, dialysis, we know it's really expensive. 
and a lot of people are dying because they don't have money to pay for those medical bills. So we are here to appeal to the government, to the new dawn government to say small, small things where we do not need, uh, where we don't need a budget. Let's make a change and see what we can do to help our citizens. So that's it, guys. Any you have a comment, Chris or Musa? Um, yes. So, um, even on the issue of health, I think that point has to be emphasized. Uh, the the new Don government needs to bring on board measures that will ensure that we have medication in hospitals. Uh, we 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 would say. Congratulations to the PF for the facilities that they built. But those facilities are meaningless without medication. Those facilities are meaningless without healthy personnel. So I think the new Don government should endeavor to, to, to bring uh, healthy personnel, to employ healthy personnel in all hospitals, in all clinics and should also ensure that medication is provided. Service delivery must be improved in these hospitals. There is no point of me, Chris, going to the hospital and then I do not get the medication I want. There's no point there. It means uh, my, 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 my right to life is being violated because it is the role of the government to ensure that uh, healthcare services are provided. So we are calling on the new Don government to, to, to bring in measures that will see to it that we have medicines in hospitals and healthy personnel. Yeah, I, I, I think it is very paramount. The, the, the right to life uh, will, will um, be prevented, will be uh, promoted when we have uh, good healthcare services. I, I think I'll not speak much on that. Yeah, uh, thank you, Madam uh, Queen. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Joseph, you can come and then Musa, you can be next. Yeah, I think in I think there is a more issue of health. Um, I've, observed, I've observed one thing, like here where I am, in these rural health centers, it has become now a serious, serious problem where sometimes maybe two weeks, three weeks, no any medicine. So I don't know what what is going on between the government and those uh, rural health centers. So I think uh, this is a question, question which um, I really want to hear from the government what's the way forward? Because I've seen now it has become now worse. This time people, they are, they are dying like here, the issue of, there is the issue of diarrhea, people, and children, they are dying every day. So I don't know what's going on. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Musa, you are next. Thank you so much. I'm back again. Uh, mm -hmm. Talking about healthy care, this is a very, very important issue that me as a leader I have to look at first because this doesn't require budget because someone to get sick, they get sick even without budget. Looking at healthcare in the system of cancer, more especially cancer ward, People there, there are so many people that are, that, that are admitted there for so many years simply because they have no money for surgery. So as a, as a reader, these are major issues that we have to look at so that we can help those people that are being admitted in a cancer, in a cancer hospital for so many years without surgery simply because they have no money. I am the victim of my niece. She is in the in UTH, in a cancer cancer ward, cancer hospital, and they are asking for some huge amount of money for surgery. And here is my brother-in-law. Doesn't work. 
even me here i don't know where to hold and that a, a huge amount of money is about, we are talking about the life of my niece it's a young child it is a, 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 a five year old girl let us look at her health we voted because we need the change change security in the health system education as well but health comes first so it's it's very it's very important that we emphasize on medication there are only three things that i've seen mom that are very important in a in a country first is health number two food number three education and and if you I could add up number four is sanitation water and other facilities but health comes first let us look at the the hospitals what are we lacking medication long time ago health long time ago hospitals were not expensive as they are today simply because they they, they have a bit of medicine and the people to help there were so many but today things are getting hard so let us see that we have organizations that can take part in also in looking at people that are in cancer ward, please, because I was there. I've seen how, how people are lying when I ask, because I ask, I interview people. I ask them, for how long have you been here? We have been here for about three months. You know, attend, we don't have money for surgery. I mean, in a nation where people are stealing money, huge bags of money, some they have no money for surgery are we fair to human right are we in support of each other thank you so much ma'am i think i'm emotional on that thank you so much ma'am i'll come back again yeah so it's very sad to hear that story you know people are they are dying in their in the hospitals you know in a country where we have people holding millions of kwacha in their bedrooms we have uh, hospital wards where people are just waiting to die because they cannot be operated on you know and these are the things we need to talk about they need to release emergency funding emergency funding to people in cancer hospitals let them all be operated on you know Free health care, clean water, free education, sanitation. We need to see change. We need something. We, we need something. Like, what did we vote for? We need to see some kind of change to benefit the people. It's sad. It's really That's sad. That's very true. That's very true. <laughs> You know, mm. people are just waiting. I had a situation two years ago to my niece. Uh, she ended up dying because uh, she couldn't afford dialysis, you know, and uh, these hospitals, they want the money first before they treat people. So people are dying. We are losing people just like that. For a country that respects human rights, this is wrong. We are signatory to the human rights, you know, declaration of human rights. We are the Human Rights Commission in Zambia. What are they doing to follow up all these cases? Ensure that Zambians' human rights are being respected. What are they doing? And then we see people, you know, just, yeah, I don't know, no, no, no. We are a rich country, you know. So, Chris, you can come in. Uh, yeah, so I, I think the Human Rights Commission has been irrelevant for a very long period of time. And I think it is time that they come on board and do their work because Zambians have entrusted them to offer checks and balances to the institutions that must ensure that uh, human rights are being followed. And those that are um, violating human rights must be brought to book. 
because in time immemorial, we've not been hearing the, the, the Human Rights Commission air out uh, cases that they follow up. We, we don't get that information. So I think we, we call them to come on board. And then still getting back to the issue of health, I, I think the government needs to do much to ensure that equipment is available in government hospitals. There's no need of, uh, of people being flown outside the country to go and seek medical attention when we have the expertise here. We have the doctors that can work on those people, but they lack equipment. And only those that are advantaged can be flown out. But what of the ordinary Zambian who does not have money? It means they'll die. Yeah. So I, I think the government needs to, to, to improve in terms of equipment and every necessary uh, facility that is needed for healthcare services. If we see those people in government flying their relatives out of the country, we see them uh, being flown, it is because they are capable. But the question is, what about the ordinary Zambian? who is unable to go to Kenya, who is unable to go to SA, how do they survive? How do we see to it that their uh, right to good health is protected? It's, it's, it's um, not fair. So the, the government uh, needs to work hard in terms of equipment and other facilities in, the, in hospitals and in clinics, yeah. So it has to be fair, it has to be fair. Those that do not have needs the healthcare services. Those that have money equally need the healthcare services. So I, I think the government needs to, to improve on that, uh, Madam Queen. Exactly, and you know, you brought up a, a very important issue where we see that people are being flown various parts of the world for treatment, but guess what? Yeah. Death is death. You know, yeah, yeah. people are coming back in caskets after flying, spending thousands of money to, mm -hmm. to book a ticket, hotel rooms, and medical care in these foreign lands. The same money yeah. if it was invested in Zambia. The amount of times the government or people, the amount of money they are spending for these expensive trips, they can use that money to hire nurses and buy equipment. Yeah. You know, yeah, I have yeah. a niece, she graduated two years. She's a nurse up to now, she's unemployed. She's mm -hmm. a medical nurse, fully qualified. What are we doing? Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's very sad. Our, it's our very priorities sad. are misplaced. You know, we see, uh, you know, these uh, flyover bridges and all the infrastructure, the airports that were built. Only 10% of the Zambian population have ever been on a plane. But we mm -hmm. find that millions of US dollars have been spent on the airport. Yeah. Instead, if that money spent on those airports should have been spent on buying equipment for hospitals, you know, improving our facilities, hiring nurses, this is what we are talking, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you'd find that uh, patients would go to the university teaching hospitals there. And from time to time, they'll be deferred, given appointments to come after six months because there is lack of equipment at UTH. And how can a, a, a person's health be compromised to that extent, whereby a person is in pain and then you make an appointment for them to come after six months? That is not rational. That is They're not rational. They're just sending them to die. You know, they're yeah. sending these people to go and die. That is you the know? thing. Yeah. So when the, you the, know, the, yeah. The the ground has to be fair. The ground has to be fair for those that have money and for those that do not have money. Otherwise, at the moment, it's uh, it's not fair. It's not fair because those that have money, quite all right, they'll go to private hospitals and seek medical attention. But the <laughs> the funny thing is that um, I don't know. There's uh, search for green pasture you find doctors who are in, supposed to see patients in government hospitals have built their own um, private hospitals 
where they divert most of their attention because the, 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 the conditions of service in government are not good, which forces those people to open hospitals where they divert most of their attention and leaving the ordinary Zambian uh, 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 suffer in those hospitals. Yeah, so I think there is much that the new Don government has to do in terms of health. Yeah, we need to see measures being brought on board. Yeah, it's some of these topics is like, especially the issue of healthcare, where a doctor opens a private clinic and starts treating, treating people, patients at a private clinic. It's like a conflict of interest. You are there to serve people and not make a profit, you know? Some of these careers, I don't think some people should take them up if they are not really, you know. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know. It's it's uh, it's uh, it's sad. You are right, Madam Queen. Yeah, uh, be because uh, most of the times you'd even find that uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's the fact that people who are in the health profession in the first place, that wasn't their dream job, that wasn't their dream career. They are probably just there to earn a living to, to enrich themselves, which is, which is wrong. I think people should do that with passion. And then you, you find people working even if they're not paid because they are not passionate. It's not all about the money, but because interest is diverted to money and enriching themselves so they end up opening private hospitals where they can uh, have a lot of money because believe me you the charges that we find in private hospitals are very exorbitant for any ordinary zambian and the majority zambians cannot afford those exorbitant prices that we find in private hospitals so the government also has come in on that. The, 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 the Human Rights Commission has to come in on that. The civil societies have to come in on that one strongly in its strongest terms because healthy uh, is one aspect that must not be negotiated. Yeah, that is my point, Madam Queen. Thank you, thank you. So yeah, just it's sad, but you know, we'll continue talking, we continue advocating for our rights to be respected, you know, proper health care for the new dawn to prioritize yeah. reforms in the health care. I think it's really, really important. And then we are almost coming to the end of our time. I know Musa, you're a bit emotional talking about your knees. You know, it's, you know, where life under death, you know, you, you, we have situations where having money in your bank account will determine whether you live or die. And that is really sad. Like we yeah. shouldn't be even be having this discussion. You know, the discussion should be like, he, we hope she recovers after the surgery. That should be the discussion. Not exactly. we are here talking about a young girl's future you know, if she's going to have a surgery because the parents have no money, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's just one, uh, one example. Many people out there, their exactly. lives are at risk. We have all lost loved ones. Like myself, I talk about how, how my mom lost, you know, we lost my mom because of misdiagnosis, you know? This is all part of this uh, healthcare system in Zambia that, you know, we want to advocate for change in, in the new dawn government so they can respect everyone every zambian can have equal access to you know global standard health care it's possible very possible very possible yes i i think as zambians we we all have to voice out every zambian must take interest in this issue we can use our various platforms, social media platforms to voice out on this issue. Each one of us has a voice. And I think if we all raise the voice, the government will listen. The institutions will listen. If we let this job 
just be done by uh, activist people in civil society or whichever people we are thinking will speak on our behalf. It's not going to happen. We all have to take responsibility. We all have to speak up because we are the ones being affected. It is not that person who is part of a certain civil society that is only affected. We are all affected. So if we all speak out, then the voice will be big. Yeah, we all have to voice out so that the people that are responsible can hear this, bring in measures that will ensure the well-being of every Zambian. Today, it might not be you, but tomorrow it will certainly be you or your relative. And it might be too late. So the earlier we speak up against the healthcare services, the better. If the healthcare services are improved uh, now, it will be better tomorrow if you are in the hospital. It will be better tomorrow if your relative goes to the hospital. So our silence will not resolve anything. We need to change our mindset as Zambians. We need to speak up. Thank you, Madam Queen. Thank you, Chris. You well said. And in closing, I want to talk about the human right about equality before the law. We have seen that Faith Musonda today, she was not prosecuted, but the state has taken over the money that she had. So again, this is, uh, you know, equality before the law. We Zambians must all be treated equally before the law. I am saying this because we have seen people who are in a, who have been incarcerated for stealing a 200 kwacha, you know? Umuntu wa msanga na 200 kwacha wa mkaka. But somebody who has found it with millions is working free. That is equivalent to money laundering. And this is what we are saying. Say, in no government, we do not expect this. We expect all Zambians to be treated equally and fairly before the law. This is all we are asking. So now it seems that this law is only applied to poor people. If you are a poor person, you are a nobody, you commit a crime, you will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. And this is what we are saying that me, myself, personally, I'm disappointed. Because Umuntu Wamsanga Nama millions of kwacha, enough to run the economy of the government, she's working free. They just confiscate the money. And then somebody who stole a 200 kwacha, or Umuntu Atukana Feba, I know, but you telling me they were, they, up to now, I think they're in jail. People have been jailed for saying that Lungu failed. And then there is a woman who has who was found with the millions of kwacha. She is walking free. Is this the new dawn we want? For me personally, I didn't campaign for this. And actually I'm shocked and disappointed that that woman can walk to freedom without even facing a trial date. Just negotiation behind closed doors at police station, ACC released a statement, she can walk free. Meanwhile, the money has been taken away. This is wrong. Yeah, yeah. I, I think all that arises um, from the institutions that we have. We have let the institutions collapse, like the anti-corruption. The anti-corruption is not doing much to, to, to bring uh, justice to the people that are running away with our money. So we as Zambians have let down these institutions that are supposed to ensure to, that we have transparency and accountability, like the issue of faith. Because a lot of Zambians are suffering, but you have money being kept by one person. That is not fair because the institutions, if the institutions were strong enough, we wouldn't be talking about this. We would be talking about uh, this person being tried in the courts of law, this person being taken to the, to the uh, police custody and all those things. But because we have allowed the institutions to, to collapse, the institutions to be corrupt, now we have these issues where uh, a person is caught free today. Meanwhile, there were huge sums of money that could have been used for various projects to run government. So I, I think we have a lot to do as Zambians. 
and I call on each and every Zambian to voice out. My point is on voicing out as Zambians. That is the only change that we'll have. Otherwise, changing governments, uh, I don't see that to be working because the systems are the same and maybe the people that we have are still the same. So if we don't change our mindset, then there's no change at all. It's true, it's true. So we'll end here. Tomorrow we'll come to try to come on the same time and we'll talk more about developing stories. Thank you viewers for watching and listening and we continue to be patriotic. We'll continue to talk about the things that people don't want to talk about. We'll be here. Yeah. Even yeah. if it's one person listening, change started with one person, you know? Exactly. If we can change one mindset at a time, if we can have one person to see what we are trying to say, that person will talk to another person, the another person will talk to another person, and from there we are going to change minds. We are going to change this country. Because yeah. this concept, me, I've lived here in the United States 21 years now, and this concept of human rights is lacking in Zambia. That's why I've taken it upon myself to say, in Zambia, we need the human rights education, starting from nursery school. You know, we need to incorporate this in our syllabus, because when we know our rights, we can fight for our rights. I can mm -hmm. refuse to be hired by a Chinese who will pay me, uh, you know, 30 kwacha a day. Even that yeah. officer at the labor office probably doesn't know at human rights. That's why when he gets a report to say I'm being underpaid, he is not taking any action. So yeah. this is a deeper problem. It's a deeper problem which is affecting our community. It's affecting people who are running our government departments because they think, you know, just because Chinese have money, then they can control us. No. They have to respect us as a human rights. Just because these Lebanese, Indians, they have money, then we have to bow to them. No, it's a mutual relationship. If they hire me, they treat me with respect. They pay me a decent living wage, you know? Yeah. So we are here, we are human rights activists and we continue to fight until we change every mindset in Zambia. I know it's an uphill battle, but the good news is that I have chosen to work with the youth and the youth, they are on the ball. The youth are on the ball, meaning they know what's going on. They are on the internet, they are reading, and the youth have made a, 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 a landmark in the world by being the most aggressive youth ever and refuse to take a bribe and remove a corrupt regime under difficult circumstances. So congratulations to the youth. The next step in liberating Zambia is respecting your human rights, learning about your human rights and advocating for them, holding your leaders accountable. This is how Zambia will change. Because Zambian politicians, they always make promises. When they go in government, they forget. Exactly. You know? It's their strategy to get in government by giving fake promises. So mm -hmm. now, Zambian youth, we are here together. Let's hold these people accountable. Let them deliver the promises they made. Otherwise, we are going to hold them to task. Yes, so I end point. here. Yeah, well. yeah, I end here. Crispin, if you have a comment or any or any one of you guys last comments before we sign off. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. You can come in, sir, on the other end. Okay, thank you very much. I think um, today, our topic for today was so, so, so interesting. Yeah, I think it's very important that we try to remind this. I, I think even myself, I usually observe like these people that we have in the offices, like human rights and so on, gender and so on. It seems like these people, I don't know if they, because they have been, been appointed, they, they get jobs there through political way, I don't know. Because sometimes, even if you take a, a certain complex, sometimes they don't even understand, even the way they're responding. You even get shocked. So 
I think it's very important that we start maybe educating them through this this uh, forum. Maybe they can uh, change. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Musa, I have your last comments and I see Crispin, you just joined us, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we are just signing off. So Chris, you can have your last comment and Musa and then Crispin will be the last one. Okay, uh, I think we have lost Chris. Crispin, your last comment, we are signing off. Oh, uh, are you able to hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, I would like to, to thank you for uh, coming up with um, uh, this idea of um, like addressing the nation through this platform. Maybe they will hear us and uh, we, may be, we may get help uh, through you. So continue doing the same. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, guys, it's I right. think we are it. We call it a night. We'll be here again tomorrow, 21 hey. hours. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Hope you have a good evening. Thank you, guys. Same to you, Follow, Madam. Night. Uh, like, share my page, also my YouTube channel. We'll talk, we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Have a good night.